Now for more on this is Captain Umar Ali, retired. He's a security expert. Thank you for your time and thanks for taking your workouts, taking time out of your workout session to join us to look at this very interesting development in Nigeria. Now quickly here, while Nigerians welcome the recent release of abducted students, albeit in batches and trickles, parents uh, have been concerned about the uh, insistence of ransom being paid. But for these parents, they say no ransom was paid. So how do you see this new development or this new twist? When you see a situation where parents gladly having their children insist no ransom was paid, it shouldn't come as a surprise. Don't forget, there are still other children, you know, there are still other children in, being held in captivity. So the parents may not want to make any statements or, you know, come short of their agreement with these uh, kidnappers to the detriment of other children who are still within their within within the kidnappers dens but then none of this is coming as a surprise this was all foretold and you will agree with me Suleiman, because some of the time we did this together time was when five four years ago we said or i said the threats were becoming bolder and indeed we have seen over the past two three years that they're getting bolder they're not only going after government officials, uh, senior military officers and their families, they are going after children too. They are going after children. So uh, quickly here, uh, you know, time was when uh, some thought that the government of Nigeria was going to put in place a safe school program. At the moment, Kaduna State government has ordered the closure of schools as a means to stop the uh, the spate of kidnappings uh, in the state. However, some argue that this uh, is a defeatist move uh, by the uh, Kaduna State government. Not only defeatist, it rubbishes the majesty, the reckoning, and even the confidence the people will have in government. Don't forget, some of our politicians seem to have forgotten what the social contract is all about. The social contract is premised on citizenry giving up certain rights, the rights to self-defense, the rights to so many other things, to government so that there can be order. Now, where government has decided to chop down schools or shut down schools because they cannot seemingly find a solution towards some very worthless court headers are doing in the bushes, then you're beginning, to, you're beginning to wonder, who is an asset to the state? Is it the goat herder in the forest or the child who is in school, as in tomorrow's people? Who is an, who is an asset to the nation? So you are just looking at a government that is engaging in subterfuge because they are a bit, they are a bit out of contention. They are a bit out of contention with what to do. You know... What is Nigeria dealing with at the moment? Uh, the, the bandits, uh, are they what you call Boko Haram? You know, Boko Haram, uh, or you're dealing with, uh, you know, some other terrorist group? Because a few days ago, a fighter jet uh, was shot down, suggesting that these bandits or kidnappers uh, may have uh, some surface-to-air missile to bring down an aircraft. That question is indeed key, but what I try to what I try to comprehend with right now is, I cannot begin to imagine our law enforcement legislators, politicians, actually don't see what is plainly, plainly, plainly stated in broad daylight. Look at it this way, Slay. If artists can do a collaboration, what makes you think criminals cannot do a collabo? Look, we've been through this. We've been through this. Our people, our politicians, our legislators, our governments, they know where to find help right here within Nigeria. But somehow that ego, that gregariousness, that sitting in your high saddle that comes with political office and uh, probably law enforcement agencies is what is giving these little riffraffs and urchins in the bushes 
the gods to do what they do. As I told you, five years ago, we did this together. I told you, from my dashboard at Goldwater, they were getting bolder. We've seen them pin governors down. We've seen them attempt, in fact, they've turned military officers to rabbits now. They take military officers out. They take their wives out. So exactly what are we talking about? You know, Solutions uh, are perfect. Uh, before we quickly wrap this, uh, talking about solutions, uh, I, I recall then years ago, you had also warned uh, Nigerians about the movement of uh, these people from Nigeria's northeast. Now we have seen them in Nigeria's northwest. And we've seen also pockets of uh, kidnappings in uh, the southern part of Nigeria. Uh, is it safe to say these same people are making incursion uh, towards uh, Nigeria's uh, southern region? Of course they are. It's a lucrative business for them. I recall I once made it from, Bada, uh, from Seme border to Aflao, and I never went through the roads. I never went through the roads. I did it with a map and a compass, and in some time where I could find network Google Earth. Now you're talking about people who cannot even spell pen. Some of them cannot spell the guns they hold. They are illiterate, they're not educated, but they know that, you know what? If we can herd some school children in, it's the fastest way to make 100 million. It's lucrative, and our space, our nation's space, seems to be the ground for making that kind of money. So if they come in and they trend from the southwest down the northeast, you just mention it. They keep going as far as it gets until we flush them out. So quickly here, let's uh, wrap uh, this up. Uh, what uh, should the solution be now for a country that has been fighting uh, insurgency for over a decade now? For over a decade now, we're 11 or so years, or even more, we've been fighting insurgency. And uh, we seem to be fighting insurgency with verbiages. We seem to be fighting insurgency looking outwards. These insurgents take notes. The solutions to insurgency are in here. I tend to tell people that if the insurgent's mother is a woman like mine, we have what it takes to pocket him. It's left for the law enforcement agencies to swallow their ego and look inwards. Nobody wants to antagonize them. We just want to make our home and country safer. Whether they can do it or not is not about verbiages and whatever. It's about what the people see on ground at the outlays of our country, in the mud huts and the villages. Those places we call ungoverned spaces, are they really ungoverned? That's my own solution. If they know where to find solutions, if they want solutions, I'll leave it at that for the evening select. Well, retired Captain Blade Umar Ali, many thanks for speaking to us.